Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, in this presentation, I'm, I'm going to show you uh, in few examples how make files work. Yeah, there is um, not, not really much to it. Uh, right away, I'm going to tell that uh, this presentation is going to be rather short. Uh, so, yeah, uh, let's get to it. Um, hold on. Yeah, uh, this presentation uh, attempt to, to explain mystery behind the make file syntax. Uh, like myself included, uh, like a few years ago, I have no idea. I had no idea how this syntax worked when I had to look at it uh, during my uh, business assignments. I, I was wondering how it works and stuff. So I hope this presentation would be useful to you. And I would like to. Uh, Point a disclaimer that uh, this is uh, just my experience and uh, there could be gaps in it, but uh, yeah, it could be useful for those who is unfamiliar with this tool completely. So right away, um, let's start with the uh, mic file syntax. It's uh, re really rather simple. Uh, we have a bunch of resources uh, and we just explained to the make tool how to uh, obtain such a resource. For example, we have a resource that is called a cup of tea. And we explain to the make uh, how we can create a cup of tea. Essentially, we have a resource, we have then a semicolon, and that semicolon, then we explain dependencies. Uh, essentially, before uh, creating such a resources, my file will try to satisfy dependencies first. For example, to make a cup of tea, we need water, lemon, and a tea. So uh, before trying to create tea, uh, the make will make water, lemon, and tea first. And then when dependencies are met, uh, make will essentially uh, call the uh, creation, uh, creation process function, essentially um, almost a common line syntax uh, to whatever you, you want to do with those ingredients, how to obtain them. Um, T essential. So this is uh, this is the basics of the syntax. Uh, like I said, it's really sim simple. We have a resource, we have semicolon, we have dependencies to obtain such a resource. Uh, those dependencies need to be met first. And then we is, uh, have a one uh, tab character. It's uh, very important to understand that two spaces will not do. We need tab. And then we have a, a one or, or few uh, lines of code, essentially almost a, a Linux command line uh, functions, uh, how to obtain such a resource. Uh, so uh, yeah, let's, uh, we'll see a small hello world. Um, this is a very basic make file. Uh, it explains a resource that is called hello.txt. It has no dependency and uh, uh, even though there is no dependencies, make knows how to obtain such a resource. We essentially uh, use uh, Linux uh, command echo to uh, redirect such an echo into a file. So it's kind of like a useless example, but it shows like uh, every file is a resource and by doing a command uh, make fulfills such a resource. So here's an, an example kind of in a real time um yeah as you can see i did make hello.txt uh it executed echo command and then it's fulfilled uh, uh itself kind of by creating this um, hello.txt file yeah so like i said it's rather simple um uh let me st uh, do one step back sorry um to obtain hello.txt, we essentially tell uh, make uh, by passing an argument, uh, essentially we call make and then resource what we want to make. That is the syntax of colon make, essentially. Then uh, we see uh, basics. Um, first of all, we have a universal resource called all. This resource, uh, is kind of special. When you call make with no arguments, uh, make uh, will try to uh, build the resource that is called all. And essentially, you can even um, 
a pass uh, uh, like uh, comments to it, but it's usually not done. Uh, usually all just specifies dependencies. So in this example, um, all says to build all we need hello. And this uh, small example, what it does is essentially uh, it downloads a file called hello world.c from the internet, and then it compiles it using GCC. So uh, let me uh, just example, let me explain every uh, bit of this uh, small file. Uh, so like I said, we have dependencies. We, uh, when we build all, we build hello. To build hello, we then, we need hello world.c. It's another dependency. But to build hello world.c, we need to call a CURL that would uh, output itself into this weird variable called dollar sign uh, and at. Uh, this is a special variable that uh, denotes current target. So in, in this particular call, this dollar sign and at will be a hello world.c itself. So essentially, uh, this uh, current tangent thing useful when you have um, several targets uh, denoted by the, the same comment. Um, another example is uh, a muted execution. For example, when we uh, build uh, hello itself, uh, the short uh, resource, a resource here, you can see that I do echo, I do GCC and I do another echo and they are uh, prefix it by uh, add symbol. That means that those comments will not be uh, printed to the user. Otherwise, uh, the statements themselves will be printed. Uh, so you will see like echo compiling and then compiling. With a uh, add uh, a symbol pre prepended, you will not see the original comment uh, itself. Yeah, it is also um, important to remember that you need tab to uh, separate uh, command uh, that is uh, allocated to our resources. If you will miss like tab or if you will put spaces, it will not work. Yeah, and another uh, small thing, it, it is not shown here, but it is pretty important. Uh, dollar sign and um, I don't know how it's called, the special symbol uh, up, um, it is used to uh, uh, denote current dependencies. It is also could be useful in some examples. I will show uh, later on. So I'm gonna execute this uh, tiny script now. As you can see, uh, we have a make file. I do make and it instantly compiles hello. Uh, so to obtain hello world.c, we need download it, download it. And to obtain hello executable, we need to compile. It. Essentially uh, make, just has a like a dependency tree. So when you we you do make, it tries to resolve all dependency. To resolve all dependency, we need hello world that C dependency. And uh, yeah, it works like this. Like this. <clears throat> uh, then uh, we have uh, variables. It's a, a pretty important uh, piece of uh, any make file. Uh, you can define variables either in or you can pass them alone as a uh, environment or command line arguments. In this uh, example, we have uh, two variables defined. Uh, one is CC, uh, just it's use, uh, usually compilers, com C compilers usually uh, uh, are stored in uh, CC variables and usually uh, compiler flags usually stored in a C flags variable. In this example, we are trying to uh, compile hello by uh, compiling, by calling cc uh, dash o, and then, uh, yeah, this weird stuff. So uh, let me explain uh, how it works. Uh, dollar sign uh, parenthesis cc uh, will be replaced uh, into GCC. That's how uh, variables are used. So on the first line of this example, I have defined cc. And then I'm, I'm essentially using it. Um, it's, it uh, its text is gonna be replaced by GCC. Then um, it's just a regular text, the dash O. It, uh, it's a GCC part. If you're not familiar with, with it, uh, you specify where to build an executable. And then you have this uh, dollar sign at, which means um, it will be replaced 
uh, into a current resource. Current resource now is a hello. So it will be replaced in a hello. And then we have C flags, which will be G dash, uh, dash G. And the last one is a dollar sign uh, and up, which will be replaced by dependencies. Current dependency is main C. So essentially, when you call make hello, it's gonna uh, compile main C into hello. Uh, yeah, small example. Uh, go on, forward. Uh, there are several um, ways to define a variable. You can uh, do a lazy assignment. You essentially say a, a equal B. That means um, A will be B, but it will be kind of lazy. For example, if A is defined by using some other variable, like A equals uh, dollar sign C and then some other text, then value of A will depend on the value of C at the use time. Uh, it's important, important to understand like if this variable A will be used later on, depending on the current variable of C, A will change. So yeah, lazy assignment. Um, then uh, A um, uh, colon uh, equals B, that means it's A is just permanently assigned to B and uh, it's gonna be always that way. Um, A question mark equals B, that means A will be a B unless defined in a command line or environment, environment variable, sorry. There is uh, two, also two ways to define a variable, even not explaining it in a make file. It could be uh, passed along in a command line argument when make is called, or you can just define environment variable. It, it will be available inside of a make file. Usually compilers uh, just expose those uh, CC variables themselves and uh, make files uh, does not do not in, even need to like define that variable. So it, it will be like you will compile whatever you want regardless or on whatever compiler you, you have. And uh, uh, yeah, two another ways to define a variable. You can append data uh, to existing variable if you like uh, construct a comp complex uh, variable and then you later on need to append something to it, you can either use uh, plus equals or you can just reference uh, the same variable in itself and then use it, it's gonna work. Uh, yeah, like I said, uh, variables can be defined in two, in two ways. Essentially as a, an argument when make is called, you see this first line, make cc equals gcc that means cc variable will be available inside of a make environment variable so to speak so cc will be also available and you can uh, also define um, cc variable just for this call if you're familiar with this syntax the last line essentially means define an environment variable just for this call uh, yeah, uh, I hope you are following this. If if not, we can return uh, to it later. I could explain it later on. So uh, yeah, let's uh, take a look at typical project building process. If you're not familiar with it uh, in a, like in depth, usually when you try to compile a binary, a uh, compiler uh, needs to assemble object files first. For example, uh, as you can see, main C is uh, assembled into main O and input.c is assembled into input.o. Those are object files. They have limitations to them. And they are, why, why are they like that? Is uh, because um, we need to speed up building process and we have like thousands of source files at a time and we can't compile everything at once. So we do it. Um, uh, one by one and it, this stuff is also easily parallel so later on uh, we have a bunch of uh, object files which could be uh, combined into a library or they could be uh, linked together into a binary um, so usually when you uh, build the project it uh, uh, goes in two stages well actually more than two but uh, it's important to, to show that at least two of them we usually uh, assemble object files, and then we link object files together into a binary. 
So how uh, actually make usually does it? For example, we have a small uh, mic file. Uh, I, I throw everything unimportant away. In this example, to build all, we need to build executable. Uh, the bottom line says to be executable, we need uh, to obtain libraries. And uh, uh, libraries could be a variable that contains a bunch of variables. And uh, for example, we have a specific library that's called library target. And uh, to uh, obtain such a library, we need to uh, obtain object file source. And uh, if you uh, look uh, up, you can see uh, to obtain uh, one uh, object file, we need uh, to build it. So essentially it's like uh, dependency tree. To build all, you need exec executable. To need executable, you need a bunch of libraries. To build a library, you need uh, each object file so it's like a tree. <clears throat> um, I hope it makes sense too. Uh, detecting sources. Uh, typical uh, project would uh, contain more than a few uh, C or C++ files. And it it is usually annoying to uh, specify each individual file um, separately. Uh, it would take, um, you know, every new C file, you would need to specify additional file in here. So uh, you can detect sources. Um, how, how is it done? Usually when you define a variable, as you can see, uh, C equals GCC, uh, we uh, understand how it works, but sources is a sp variable that is defined through a special call that is called wildcard. This is part of uh, make tool. It essentially allows you to define a variable that would be resolved to a list of files that match a particular um, pattern. For example, with this call, sources will be defined with uh, files that um, <clears throat> in your, uh, sorry, is that file that you are in your folder. And then, as you can see, hello depends on those sources. So any new file that you would add up into your directory would become a dependency automatically. And thus, uh, it would be needed to be assembled and such so on. Um, in this example, we, don't, we do not have any object file construction. We just directly compile it, compile it into a binary. So it's a one-step process. Um, just for the sake of um, minimalism, I am showing you um, it, it, it that way. So the rest of uh, this presentation is gonna be uh, on a weird architecture for the weird platform. Uh, I'm, I'm just trying to show you that uh, Makefile is uh, really agnostic to all of this stuff. Any compiler, any system will do. It's just, uh, you have to do a couple of agreements how it, how it works. You just define a bunch of variables and uh, yeah, you use them uh, like so. <clears throat> uh, we move on. Uh, object source correlation. Um, yeah, this is uh, a rather complex uh, example, but I'm gonna, gonna try to explain it in detail. This is um, for this uh, weird Z80 platform for the text spectrum, uh, which I'm gonna show you uh, how it works. So we defined a, batch, a bunch of variables first. CC, LD, CFLEX, LDFLEX, um, and then we define variable sources that would be resolved into a list of uh, C files. For example, main C, hello C, the other C, and then we are weird syntax objects equals um, dollar sign braces sources colon, uh, and then uh, dot C equals dot O. We kind of traverse sources into objects. So this syntax allows you to uh, generate a list that would contain a, uh, each file that you previously collected, but uh, uh, extensions replaced. So uh, for example, if you have uh, variable sources and it, it would contain fails, files uh, main.c, uh, hello.c, then objects will contain uh, main.o, hello.o, because it will be traversed via this special syntax. Why is it useful? Well, you can uh, then, we are a special syntax uh, at the bottom, tell make, how could you, could you essentially convert one extension into another? 
uh, you see this percent sign that O uh, is a resource, but it would match it would match to any uh, object file. Any object file would be built that way. And to be to build any object file, you need a dependency that would result to any C files. Essentially, means that to build any main that O, you need to resolve dependency uh, main that C. And uh, in the bottom uh, of this uh, resources uh, of this resource, sorry, it explains how to uh, essentially do it. And uh, yeah, uh, then usually uh, we have uh, an executable, and we pass the uh, objects as dependencies to it, and then we we essentially call a uh, com compiler as a linker. If you're not familiar with it. I could explain it in, in questions, I guess. And we link those object files together. So it, it's important to understand that we uh, compile, uh, we assemble object files first by using this special uh, percent notation, we essentially tell a make to how to uh, build every uh, old file. For example, you can even have a couple of collections. You have objects for uh, executable, you can other objects for some library you can objects for different directory regardless of those lists make will know how to make uh, object file from a c file by this special unique rule yeah like so uh, let me show you um, this example in action so uh, as you can see i just called make and it uh, it uh, compiled uh, let me show you. Yeah, it uh, to uh, create uh, executable and run it. Uh, it essentially assembled uh, main.c into main.o. Uh, as you can see, uh, my rule o uh, semicolon c uh, o colon c. Sorry, uh, I just explained how to convert c into o, and essentially make did it, and then. Uh, uh, my compiler just linked those object files into an application, and then an application uh, was essentially executed into this executable, as, as you can see how it works here. So hope it makes sense to you. <clears throat> uh, move on. Uh, Phony targets. Uh, usually, um, well, not usually, but sometimes you need to rebuild the resource even if uh, the file that denotes such a resource exists. Uh, for example, if you uh, have a resource uh, to uh, build some uh, resource and uh, then you call make, it will create such a resource and a consequent makes will do nothing. Uh, but if you uh, will denote such a resource as a phony, it will be rebuilt every time. You see, uh, it can do anything, it already rebuilt it. So in this example, I'm just denoting uh, hello as a phony, and thus uh, every call will just rebuild it every time. It could be useful at times. <clears throat> uh, yeah, and uh, we have uh, some uh, other uh, tiny tricks we could use. For example, we, can, we could use if ec, if equal, uh, those are essentially similar to C's if devs when you can depend in, on some variables, uh, define different rules and resources. This is useful when you have different uh, um, architectures or platforms and you have and you need like one unique mail file that would cover all of those uh, platforms. And you can, for example, define a variable that's called target. And if a target equals uh, I don't know, uh, Unix, then we build it that way. If it is a target equals Windows, then build it a different way. Um, another one is make dash C. That way you can specify to make uh, which subfolder is used instead of current one. This is useful when I make file uh, in the make file itself, uh, make uh, uses another make to build a sub resource. For example, if you have um, complex project that uses a bunch of sub projects and you're not supposed to know how to compile those projects exactly you're just um, 
delegating that to a, a Mac tool itself in the sub -pro project itself. Um, yeah, another a small trick is uh, do just print. It, it is useful to just uh, understand how uh, uh, make works. Just do dry fire call. It's useful when you uh, want to know that uh, everything works uh, as planned. Yeah, and uh, another small trick is uh, shell. Um, like I said, there are uh, some special ways you can, for example, do wildcard, but wildcard is not a Linux function. It's not a command uh, of a Linux. It's a make uh, tool function. When you need to call Linux code, or for example, you need like uh, some weird stuff from bash or stuff like this, you need a special wrapper called shell. It could be useful when you like uh, uh, got stuck in a limitation of a make file. Yeah, I uh, hope it makes sense to you. So yeah, uh, this is pretty much all to it. Um, as I said, it would be a short presentation. Um, like I said, there's not, not much to it, but um, hope it all makes sense. If you have any questions, please shoot them up and uh, shoot, shoot them up and I will try to answer them to my knowledge.